Good afternoon. This is episode 418 and the topic today is why self-love really is the answer. And before I jump into that, let me introduce myself. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker and relationship attraction expert. I help strong successful women find balance in love, life and business. Thanks for the love already. I love people jumping into my broadcast and I'll get to that in a second too. So what do I get to? <laughs> I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I did say that part. And help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And I do these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. Masculine supporting the feminine. And today's topic, I should say today's episode is number 418, because it's getting up there now. And the topic today is why self-love is why self-love really is the answer. And I'm going to break this down in a few ways, but to give you some insights, guidance, and support. So, oh nice, Nicole. So you're driving, you're driving LA traffic. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> oh, that was just going to mention. If you're watching this on other platforms besides Facebook, I'm actually doing this on Facebook Live initially, which is why I'm talking to people who are commenting on the screen, like my friend Nicole. Um, so I'll attempt to repeat the question statements they make so that way you'll know who or what I'm responding to. Because you may watch this on YouTube, or you may listen to this on iTunes as well later on. So I want to give you that resource. So, so Nicole, please make sure you're watching the road. <laughs> if you're driving, you shouldn't be tapping the screen. You should be focusing on the road. Um, <laughs> but thank you for joining me. I appreciate that. So, the topic. Why self-love really is the answer. And this is actually something I've been hinting at a lot in my talk. In fact, yesterday's talk I gave out a very... gave out. I shared a clear message about... Um, post heartbreak status and self support to move forward and I've got a whole big discussion about the self support self confidence, self love, self appreciation self approval, self support and all these self things and I thought today I'd just focus on self love because it's such a critical piece and for me the power of this is so underestimated by people, so many people I'm afraid, well I'm afraid I'm just saddened to know that they don't take self-love seriously. I mean, it sounds so crazy to say this. And I want to make something very clear at the beginning. Self-love is not a selfish act in the sense of being ego-based. Self-love is the appreciation, the support, and the love of yourself so you don't settle for things less than you deserve. It's a distinct difference, and I'll get into that more clearly as we get into this conversation. So, to really bring this up in another way, one of the biggest, um, I would say diseases, that's not a word, um, one of the biggest traps, I'll put it this way, that people fall into in relationships is they fall into the, Daniel, nice to see my broadcast. <laughs> Real love, yes. Well, I love you too, and it's great and nice to see you on broadcast for, for, for a surprise. So. A lot of people falling in the trap in a relationship are falling into this trap that I like to label, well, I don't like labeling, it's what it's called, codependence. Because we think somehow the other person completes us, which is a complete fallacy, and I've talked about this before, it's not something that can be done because none of us are half a person, we're all whole people. You know, we might forget that. And one of the things that helps that is to remember that you're whole and to love yourself. And it sounds so simplistic when I say it that way, but I'm going to break down a couple of pieces as I get into this more fully. Another piece of this is well let me back actually let me do another piece on the self the um codependent model a lot of people are wired as i said, talked about before i did a talk a few days ago about how your knight in shining armor is really a dick in in tinfoil so many women have been trained to wait for their um um knight in shining armor to show up and save them from their sad life whatever that might be when the reality is they're looking for someone who will love them because they don't feel loved themselves and it's true on both sides of the conversation, men and women. Some men are so driven to work or to focus on where they're going that they don't actually take care of themselves enough. They want a woman to take care of them. Again, codependent. This is a thing where you want the other person to do things for you that you may not do for yourself. And there's so much that we don't do it for ourselves, which includes self-love. So let me break that one down more. When you're single, by the way, let's put the other side of the coin. When you're single, one of the most powerful tools you can implement to take care of yourself and to be more attractive for a relationship, if you're looking for one, is to love yourself. And I mean this from the point of view is that when you love yourself, you take care of yourself. And it's not necessarily just going to the gym or something like that. It's about you don't put yourself, no, let me put the do's, not the don'ts. 
<laughs> what you do is raise your standards. Because when you're single, the temptation can be to settle. And it can be a temptation to go out with somebody that may not be what you're really looking for, but you're lonely and you want to go out with somebody. When you are really focusing on self-love and self-support, loneliness is not an issue. And this is a game changer for all the people. The ability to wake up to the understanding that being totally aligned to your own support and self-love removes any concern about loneliness and desperation. But a lot of people in the dating arena are running that desperation cycle. And it's depressing, upsetting, and even sickening at times to be witness to, just to be, you know, completely transparent about that. So, to add some more content to this conversation, the trap that many people have fallen into as well is they don't know if they deserve love. This is another piece of, the, these are like layers of the cake, as it were. So, not feeling they deserve love is a whole other paradigm. I was talking to somebody recently about this, where their upbringing was such that they didn't feel loved by their parents because their parents, in fact, told them they weren't lovable. And this is an extreme situation, so I'm not, I'm not sure none of you have the experience, but we all have their own variations of that. So as an adult, she's not feeling loved she, sorry, she's not feeling loving for herself, and she's not feeling loved by her partner, so she's always in relationships that end abruptly because she doesn't feel the love inside. And she's not feeling it from the man, the, her men either. And that is, unfortunately, because of the wiring inside, and I'll get to that in a bit too. I'm putting other things in the future I know, but I'll get to them, most of them, I hope, and I remember what they are. So that self-love muscle, so to speak, that self-love practice, it's so, it, it's so glossed over by so many people because they think it's so simplistic. It's like, oh, that's no big deal. I love myself, I'm fine. Really? Because that's the thing that I have a big um, question about. It's for those people who have looked at self-love and go, yeah, I'm fine. I'll just get on and meet somebody else and they'll make me feel better and I'll be okay. Which is completely backwards. As I mentioned, the codependent model is the trap we fall into when we don't love ourselves. When you love yourself, you become clear again, remembering that you are whole. And when you are whole, you look for a partner that's whole as well, and that removes the codependent trap that you might fall into. In fact, when you're loving yourself fully, expressing who you are, as I mentioned, you raise your standards, which is an awesome thing to do, and you'll also look that you won't go into a relationship unless it really matches where you're going, versus somewhere you just want to get your rocks off or feel comfortable, whatever that is. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with getting your rocks off, but know that's what you're doing, and be clear that you're not doing that for a long-term relationship. That's a escape valve, shall we say. So self-love raises your standards, and when you attract somebody of that same level, you're both loving yourselves, you're both autonomous, you're both whole beings, so that when you're in a relationship, you're adding to each other versus filling up gaps you think you might have. I also believe self-love will be a cure for many people who have been contemplating depression, suicide, and things like that, because those are things where love can heal, can help, can uplift. And for a lot of people out there who are feeling that emptiness, they have not known how to fill it, they turn to drugs, alcohol, other things too, and some do choose suicide because, and I'm not speaking to all of this, I'm just speaking my perspective on this, is that that feeling of lack and emptiness can't be filled by anybody else. And they haven't learnt, or haven't been trained, or have never discovered they could fill it up themselves. So if you're feeling any one of that spectrum of loneliness to depression or anything in between, one of the biggest cures, one of the biggest correctives you can do is start really loving yourself. And I have a practice I'll give you at the end, which I talked about yesterday, and I'll repeat it today, because it's simplistic in the sense of it's easy to understand how to do it, but the key is doing it. And I guess that in a second too. So the couple of things I want to drop in your lap to share with you on this um, theme of self-love. I did say that self-love really is the, is the answer. Is it, I think that's what the title was. Because for many of us in a relationship, the other person has to um, achieve a certain standing with us. They have to be at a certain level with us. They have to be a certain quality, produ uh, producing things, delivering things, whatever that is for us. And we unfortunately, we unfortunately, are raised in this situation where we won't do it for ourselves. Now I'm thinking inclusively because I fell in the trap too for many times. In fact, having been single all this time, you know, I've been single for a while, has been a practice in self-love, even when I'm around social situations where I meet attractive women, single women, whatever that is, because any time I feel that urge inside, that, that 
I'm going to call it a book, the neediness that shows up inside of me innately sometimes. My work is then to love that and love myself, so I don't have that out there because that's a very unattractive quality. So for those of you watching, you may be aware of this too, that if you have this need show up inside, this yearning that's pulling you out to meet somebody, and this, not necessarily desperate, but needy energy is pulling them, pulling you to them, do your best to step clear, to spend some time focusing inward, to love yourself, and to love that part that is needing, because that's the part of you that's lonely. It's the part of you that's seeking. It's the part of you that's not being filled. And it's a reminder to you to fill up your own tanks first. There's a, a workshop I took years ago, and they're still doing the workshops now. But one of the things they talk about, they, use the, they, think, they talk about approval as a function of self-esteem, self-support, self-love. And in this process, they talk about, imagine that you have, um, let's talk about the, the, sorry, they talk about the um, idea of using self, sorry, uh, of, let me try it again. I've got dumped in my head, I'm trying to explain it in, like came through like this, and now I'm going to put it in, in sequence. So, at, this, at this, this workshop, they were talking about the idea of approval. And they're just seeing self-approval and others' approval. And how, if you compare it, for example, with an analogy of oil, the viscosity of oil that is self-approval is much thicker than self-approval from others, which is thinner. Meaning that when someone approves you, somebody loves you, it may fill you up for a while, but eventually it will wall away. If you fill it from the inside out and you fill it with your own love, self-approval, self-support, self-appreciation, that lasts a lot longer. And this is the thing. We have this bad habit, though, of disavowing it after we've had it for a few little while. So we may start saying, I'm going to love myself, appreciate myself, and appreciate who I am. But then something happens to go, no, forget it, I'm just going to be depressed again. That's the human condition. We do do that. But you don't have to. And so this is a reminder on many different levels and many different places where self-love is the answer. As the title said, self-love really is the answer. If you're single or in a relationship, the more you love yourself, the more attractive you become to prospects and to your partner. And it's that simple switch that you can turn on that makes them turned on, <laughs> in a way, if you know what I mean. So to appreciate and love yourself is really, and this is the key, by the way, because I know and I judge it myself, sometimes I see people out there who are so full of themselves, which is an egocentric, mental, um, <laughs> judgmental way of living life, that's not self-love, and so I want to make sure that self-love is very different. Self-love can be very quiet, in fact, because self-love is not something necessarily that's overt, it's going to make you um, bombastic or, or demonstrative. It does take self-love for a lot of people to be able to be in front of other people, to speak, to share, to lead, to teach. But when it, cro when it crosses the line over into ego-driven, um, what's the word I was looking for? Um, was not self-anger, self well, it's not confidence anymore, it's ego. That's something I don't recommend you cross, it's not functional. So, self-love is the heart level, I'm going to break this down simply. If you're running it from up here, you're in self-confidence, you're in, actually no, sorry, you're in self-deception, you're actually ego-driven. If you do it from down here, in your heart, sorry, on camera, if you do it from your, in your heart, that's where your love really truly resides. It's metaphorical, I know, but this way you connect, by putting your hand here, by connecting here, and feeling the love inside. So let me get to the practice, because I know some of you are desperate for that now, to get on with you. I'm actually going to be providing a, a guided meditation and a um, written, written guidance for this, because I use it all the time, but I haven't given it as an assignment, as a physical assignment to my, my email list, which I'm going to do sometime soon. So if you're interested in that, let me know. So here's what you need to do. And it's so simple and so ridiculous that people will forget to do it. So I'm saying to you, if you're watching this and you want to do it, commit to 30 days. You do this twice a day, and, what and I'll you know what it is probably if you've seen my broadcast. If you haven't, I'll explain it very quickly. But if you do it for 30 days, twice a day, it will change your life completely. And the practice is very simple. It, it, you can call it mirror work, you can call it anything you want, in fact. But it's simply taking the time during the day to love yourself. And you can do this as a practice initially, because you can span from here completely. But you start off with a practice morning and evening in front of the mirror, a a wall mirror or a mirror against the medicine cabinet or whatever it is so it's in front of you you can stand facing it and you look in your own eyes and you connect to yourself in the mirror and you take time to breathe and connect with that part inside where well, you feel it and especially if you feel wounded or you feel hurt and if this has happened where something happened to you that you got upset distressed or hurt this is a perfect time to do it but even not still do this twice a day 
five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, looking in the mirror, seeing your own eyes, and saying to yourself, when you're connecting with yourself, I love you. And say that so you feel it, to really connect inside, and then at the same time, receive it back from the mirror. This mirror book is great because you get to do both, giving and receiving at the same time. And by doing this practice for five minutes or so, and breathing calmly, deeply, inhaling and re receiving the love, expressing and exhaling the love to yourself in the mirror, five minutes a day, sorry, five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, twice a day, that will change your life in 30 days. And if you do that practice, if you take that on and you make that your homework, as I recommend often, your life will change. By loving yourself, appreciating yourself, and continue to build that muscle, as it were, to practice that, to build that up, your relationship choices will, will improve, your personal um, reflection will improve. Oh, the addition I was going to go to. And as you catch yourself during the day, things may happen that might put you on edge. Maybe someone, maybe get a parking ticket, or someone cuts you in line, cuts up, cuts you off in line, or someone doesn't give you what you were asking for. The temptation to go off track is is very much there. I understand. Being in this world, it happens. But the choice point to say, you know what, whatever that happened out there doesn't change who I am. This is a key, by the way. Whatever happens out there doesn't change who I am. In that moment, you can either physically, if you, got, if you can do it without being too overt, then again, who cares? Put your hand on your heart, do it, out, do it out loud, whatever. If you want to do it just internally, where you feel where your heart is, and say, I love you to yourself internally, take a breath, connect, remember, then move on. This is a daily practice. It's a lifestyle change that could actually change your life for the better in so many ways. But you've got to do it. So, if you're willing to take this on, I'd love to hear from you, if you after, well, as you're going through it, if you've got any questions, challenges, after 30 days, reach out to me, let me know how it goes. It really is a powerful, um, yet so simple practice. I'm remembering how many people, how many of my clients have been through this, that that practice alone changed everything. It's like all my skills and tools to help them change their lives and attract amazing relationships. The self-love practice was the game changer. So I'm giving this to you as a gift. <laughs> so take this on. Try this out for size. It doesn't, it's not going to matter to me if you don't do it, but it will matter to you. And again, if you want to reach out to me, let me know how it goes. I welcome feedback, input, suggestions. And if you do this for a month, I'd love to know how it goes because I want to get some testimonials from this. So try this on for science. It is a powerful and, um, what's the word looking for? Effective, <laughs> effective practice. And that, that piece of the, um, the journey will be the piece of change your life. As I mentioned, self-love really is the answer. And for all the other questions that are going on, all stuff I talk about, self-love really underlies all of it. I think I've made that point clear enough so many times. So, here goes. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day. And self-love is one of my regular practices I recommend. So I hope you're using it and applying it. If you want help in this area, reach out to me. If, you want, if you're looking for love in the wrong places, yes, that's the song title. And want to get help to find the real relationship you want, reach out to me. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day. This is number 418 in my daily Facebook Lives. They are Facebook Live initially. They go onto my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author, as well as onto YouTube later on. So the comments that I respond to on this live broadcast you won't see, which is why I respond to them. Um, and that my that is my channel is Barry Selby, and my playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And the third option, I'm slowly putting this onto my um, podcast channel. I have a podcast channel on iTunes, which is Messages from the Masculine. So that's where you can find me. My website is my name, BarrySelby.com. You can find out about my work, my coaching, get support, sign up for a discovery session, find my book. So much stuff on my website. And I think that's it. Um, thanks for all the love and the, and the likes, and thanks for appearing in my broadcast. Um, do the homework. You'll love it, you'll appreciate it, and you'll be thanking me later. Maybe. <laughs> Take care of yourselves. I will see you again tomorrow for more goodies. That'll be number 419. So. Who knows what that'll be? But thanks for being me as always. Thanks for the love, the light. I'll see you again tomorrow and take care of yourselves. Bye.